guys thanks for watching the channel today's tutorial we're going to put ourselves into a background like this first thing I'm going to do I'm going to go to this image that I've downloaded from Google Maps now as you can see on the bottom of the image here it's still got the Google thing in there usually it's got little arrows as well as you go along and image capture so basically what we're going to do we're just going to crop this image and as well this is on too much of a leanness light pole so we're going to cut most of this out so on the left hand side we've got what they call the crop tool as soon as you click on that the transformation box comes up you can just click on the edges and drag it into position and that'll get rid of that and especially if you're doing with a, a selfie we're going to be on the left hand side and the image is going to be on the right so we're going to take it in a little bit further like that and hit the enter button Okay, we're going to stay with that at this moment. That's fine. Go to the move tool, get the picture of yourself. And when you take a photo, you want to make sure that the background is got a distinctive difference with the color. So that when Photoshop selects, like for instance, auto, we get the quick selection tool on the top left here. Instead of going to the image and collecting it, selecting it, we're going to go select object, subject, and Photoshop will do it automatically. Now, on the actual image itself, go down to the bottom here and we're going to hit the mask tool. And straight away, it's already masked most of our image. Now, on here, the, my finger here, we're just going to use the paintbrush tool. Make sure we've got that selected and we've got a nice small size, not too big. And I want to select white to bring back some of that. Okay, so we've got too much of the background there, it's fine. Select the black. Now, I'm just going to go around like this just to get rid of that and around here just to smooth it out a bit hold in the space bar key and you can move the whole image around that way just to move it into position and go around like this I don't want to go too, don't want to go too much into all this detail here because we're going to get rid of the background of that around the edges type of thing we're going to get rid of that very shortly and another I'll show you how to do it it's very quick and easily done um, and just get rid of the bulk of this that really sticks out so right click this and go to the image screen and there's a part here I'm also going to do this part here well, I don't go into too much detail but you get an idea of what I'm talking about here now I'm holding a spacebar key while I'm doing this just to move the image around just to remember now with these areas around the actual image these little this greyish black image easy to fix right click the image convert to smart object right click it again and rasterize the image now what we're going to go, go to layer matting the fringe and we want one pixel and watch what happens to this background just here this right around the edges gone there we go that's what we want a little bit there we'll fix up later on if you're on screen get the move tool pick the actual image and it's already been cut out and drag and drop it into the new image and as you can see it's done a pretty good job selecting the edges transformation just bring it back down in size I'm going to put the bottom corner right into position like that and I'll just put myself down something like that so it looks like I'm actually Taking it, I've taken a selfie photo, but I didn't put my hand properly as you knew, as you normally don't, as as it normally happens like that. Anyway, with a felt selfie, you don't have it perfect, so it looks like it's a bit of a mistake. Now the whole idea, of this this image, we're going to make it look like so it's a bit of a like a Polaroid photo that's been taken a while back, so it's going to have a bit of an age to it. So with this now, I'm just, there's there's multiple ways you can match the colours and stuff like this. I'll show you the first way a lot of people say it's the best way to do it. Now, you've only got these two images up on open in Photoshop, which is what you want. That's good. So you get, this is the first way. Image, adjustments, and match color. Now, if you match the colors, it's got here the source, nothing selected. That's fine. If you go to the screenshot, which is the background of the Eiffel Tower, it'll come up and it'll start to match it. Um, change the fade a bit so you can muck around with this and as you muck around with it it's actually it is changing a bit neutralize it 
and I might change the fade something like that that's fine that's one way of doing it I, I don't know personally don't like it that way but anyway we'll, we'll continue that way also image adjustments and hue and saturation I'm just going to bring the hues down the saturation down a bit so it matches a little bit more now it's a bit misty so I want to get it more definition and all that type of stuff so I'm going to get image adjustments and exposure the gamma correction on the bottom is the one that gives the distinctive the dark in the images and all the bits and pieces and stuff like that and it really sharpens it up hit OK now I'm a little bit red so compared to the background it's like a, a more brownish blue so I want to change myself I'm going to change the color image adjustments and color I'm going to bring that down to a yellowy color and I'll bring this down here like that yeah there's a little bit of mucking around doing this but we'll get there image adjustments exposure I might just do the gamma correction a little bit more as well and that's looking quite good like that that's good now what we can do we can actually go back into the image and see what we're dealing with now the Eiffel Tower is looking pretty good a little bit blurred which is good that's what we want because we want the image to look like it's a portrait photo that's been taken so that the one part of the photo the closest part of the photo the image the subject is yourself and that's quite sharp and the rest of the background is quite blurred that's good we might even blur ourselves a little bit there so we go to filter blur and just normal blur it's, it's nothing much but it just kind of blends it in quite well so I'm going to go to the layer and flatten the image right click the main screen put up the main screen again so it's looking like as if we're actually there and we did take the photo so it's going to go here before we do this we're going to add a new layer a full color layer and blend it in so what we're going to do is get the eyedropper tool and we're going to get the picture we're going to get part of the picture that we really want to blend into and the color is this color here I might go to that color that's good so we go to this one here solid color and it'll come up automatically the solid color that we selected now the blending mode you can go into all different things a lot of people go straight into multiply and start changing that you can go right down to overlay it gives us this sharp distinctive look we got the hard hard light which gives us the old polaroid kind of look to it which is looking quite good I'm just going to bring the opacity down a tad not too much so it really shows up really well layer flatten layer flatten image image adjustments it's going to go into hue and saturations again bring the hue down a tiny bit just mucking around with some of these little bits and pieces here something like that that looks good image adjustments color we've got the yellow in there that's pretty good we'll put a bit of red back into there no if we go too much red it looks fake something like that is looking more realistic there we go now step two, we're going to get a picture of a old polaroid photo which is perfect that's what we want now before we do anything else we're just going to get our photo we're going to go select all command all and command c copy get our polaroid and paste I'm going to paste that in there we're going to change the transformation box and make sure it fills most of this pick doesn't matter it doesn't fill all of it that's fine that's no problems at all and we might just put it like that and we'll change the Polaroid so it fits into this anyway so that's good like that now the background what we're going to do here we're just going to right click it we're going to duplicate it and we're going to drag and drop it over the top of our image now just get the quick selection tool and just select all the black and delete that's a quite a big size photo so this is going to take some time Right, 
that's good. Now, as you can see, we've got that black there. We're going to turn off the background. Now, we've got this selected. Hold down the shift key while you've got the move tool in place. And we're just going to bring that so that it matches the actual image. And drag it down and then back up. That looks good. And hit any selection key. Now, I'm going to double click. It comes up with some options, layer options. Bevel and boss. Use the first one. Now we've got brown selected from a previous photo, which we're not don't need, don't need for this one. So I'm going to just go for a black. And it looks a little bit more realistic. Size, I'm going to take the size down a bit. Make it more realistic. Yeah, that looks good. Hit OK. That's good. I'm going to zoom back out. Here's the crop tool. Bring the whole image back to where it should be. So we don't want the bottom line there. We know what all that. And that's OK. And bring this in. I'm just trying to have it so that it's all uniform right around. Hit the OK button. OK. And that's pretty good. Now, if you want, you could actually just go into Layer and Flatten. And then pick the selection tool, like a, a dark blue or something like that. And then we can type in something like, where's the type? There's a type button there. Use the type tool. I might type in something like capital letters, something like Paris. Paris 2021, something like that. Now, the color I've got selected is the wrong color. So I'm just going to highlight it with the actual pen tool. At the top here, you've got the color that's selected. We'll go back to that color that we wanted. Real dark blue. Looks like I'm doing it with a biro. I'm just going to move back in. And I'm just going to use the move tool and bring it back to another size. Now, as you can see, because it was quite small when we were actually typing, I didn't put in the last letter. Yes. Paris. Now, the font that I've used here is Acme. I'm going to change that. Change that to something like, I don't know, handwritten type, something like that. And there's quite a few you can download samples of. The Acme one is the one that's used in cartoons, which you can download anywhere online. Lots of free font places. And put on a bit of an angle. And that looks quite good. Okay, right click and zip it on zoom. And that's pretty much how it's done. And just going to layer, flatten image, and Show that to everyone on Facebook and people think I'm in Paris. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.